The year is 1985, and you've just beaten Super Mario Bros. At the end of your journey, you finally meet Princess Peach. Dark red hair, one black beady eye, and a white and red dress. This is the princess you've just saved. But hang on a second. Compare that peach with the peach on the front of the Japanese box, and these look like two completely different women. A few years later in Mario 64, and again, her design is just completely unique. Princess Peach has gone through so many redesigns over the years, and today I want to figure out why that is. So let us answer the question, why doesn't Princess Peach look like she used to? It all starts with the original Super Mario Bros. The game was created as a close collaboration between two designers at Nintendo, Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. To get an idea of what the pair are like, Miyamoto once said this, I'll think up a unique idea, and he'll think up a crazy idea that can't possibly be turned into a video game. And together, we'll massage those ideas into one that can finally be realised as a game. So, Super Mario Bros began as just a box moving across a screen. The box couldn't jump, it couldn't really go anywhere, you could just move it up, down, left and right. But obviously, this box would need to become something. It needed to be turned into an actual character. One day, Takashi Tezuka was chatting with the head of Nintendo's sales and marketing division, when he asked to see the sales data for all of Nintendo's games. Keep in mind, Tezuka was a new employee at the time, so this request was quite presumptuous. Regardless, the head of sales did show him the data he asked for, and Tezuka noticed something interesting. More than a year after its release, the NES version of the Mario Bros arcade game was still selling really well. He thought to himself, this Mario is pretty popular and suggested to Miyamoto that they make the main character of their moving box game into Mario. Before long, Super Mario Bros had really started taking shape, with a blue sky for a background and intricate platforming challenges as levels. However, Miyamoto and Tezuka needed some kind of reason for players to reach the end of the game, and together, the pair of designers decided to adopt a classic damsel in distress storyline. You see these stories in all kinds of classic fairy tales. A beautiful maiden is kidnapped, and a handsome knight must rescue her. Now, for this beautiful maiden, Miyamoto and Tezuka could have reused Pauline from the Donkey Kong arcade game. In fact, it would have made a lot of sense, considering Donkey Kong is also the game where Mario originated. But they didn't do that. Instead, Tezuka and Miyamoto decided to design a brand new damsel in distress, and this is where Princess Peach first came into the world. Let me tell you a fun fact about Super Mario Bros. There wasn't a single artist working on the game. Instead, that job fell to Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka. That's right, as well as designing the game's systems, levels, and mechanics, the pair also drew all of the art. For Princess Peach, the design was pretty limited by the NES's colour palette restrictions. For each 16x16 16 16 tile, only four colours could be used. Since the transparent background also counts as a colour, that left only three actual colours to work with. And so, Miyamoto and Tezuka had to use some clever tricks when designing the princess's sprite. Like, her red hair can double as the red of her lips, and part of the dress too. Or the colour of her skin, which is also used for the golden crown on her head. The entire design was created in order to skirt around some pretty tight restrictions. It's very clever. So, with work on Super Mario Bros finishing up, this is the look of the princess that players would travel so far in order to rescue. However, before the game could be released, Shigeru Miyamoto had a pretty major task to complete. When we came out with Super Mario Bros, I was thinking about asking a professional manga artist or a well-known illustrator to do the art, but time was running out, so I drew the original art for the package myself. That's right, 
for the illustration on the front of the Japanese packaging, it was Shigeru Miyamoto himself who drew the artwork, and he ended up using this opportunity to flesh out Peach's design a lot more. Her red and white dress was replaced with a pink coloured one, with some kind of white ruffle around the neck. Her hair was lightened from a dark red to a light brown colour. She was given big blue eyes and rosy cheeks. This was the princess as Shigeru Miyamoto intended. And when Super Mario Bros was released in Japan in 1985, this is how she looked on the front of the box. Until, that is, her design was completely scrapped. So this is the part of the story where I need to introduce you to Yoichi Kotabe. I've talked about him a few times in the past, but Yoichi Kotabe is a legendary animator from Japan who's worked with some of the top talent from Studio Ghibli, just as one example of what he's done. But in 1985, Kotabe was looking for his next gig, when he was contacted by Nintendo. This came as a bit of a surprise to him. The only video game Kotabe had ever heard of before was Space Invaders. What use would the world of video games have for an animator like him? But after getting up to speed with some newer games, he quickly came to the realisation that the world of video games was doing some really interesting and exciting things when it came to animation. So Kotabe accepted the job offer, and before long, he started working for Nintendo. But once he actually joined the company, no one was really sure what to do with Kotabe, this master animator. For his first project, he designed a beautiful, smooth animation of Luigi spinning around in circles. But it couldn't be used in any of the games because it had so many frames of animation, far more than can fit on the limited memory of an NES cartridge. Kotabe later reflected, At that time, I was drawing a lot of stuff that no one could use. Next, Miyamoto asked Kotabe to draw a smooth animation of a magic flying carpet. And this animation did end up being used in a game, but almost all of the frames of the animation had to be cut, again just to fit it on the game's cartridge. So there was definitely a learning curve for Kotabe when he joined Nintendo. But around this time, he was given his biggest task yet to redesign the main characters from Super Mario Bros. Now, even in 1985, Mario was huge. He'd starred in Donkey Kong, in the Mario Bros arcade game, and then finally in Super Mario Bros. And even days after its launch, it was clear that Super Mario Bros was going to be huge. And now it was up to Yoichi Kotabe to redesign the characters from the game. Finally, this is where Princess Peach got her biggest redesign yet. So, first things first, Yoichi Kotabe had a look at the in-game art, the pixelated sprites. Okay, well, there was just a single sprite for the princess, which wasn't a lot to go on. So, next he looked for official artwork. But again, there was only a single illustration on the front of the box. So, Kotabe asked who drew this illustration, and found out it was Shigeru Miyamoto. He approached Miyamoto and asked what he wanted from this new design for Princess Peach. Well, Shigeru Miyamoto actually had some big changes he wanted for Princess Peach. He later explained, Peach completely changed. I told him everything I wanted, like how I wanted the eyes to be a little cat-like, and also how he wanted her to look stubborn but charming. That's how Princess Peach's face began to resemble how she looks nowadays. As for her clothing, Kotobe decided to stick with a pink dress as seen in Miyamoto's artwork, but he removed the white ruffle thing round her neck and added a big gemstone on her chest. She was given two blue earrings, and then lastly for the hair, Kotobe went with a much blonder, almost golden colour. And voila! This was the redesigned look of Princess Peach. And if you've been playing Mario games for a while, it should look rather familiar. So that's the end of the story, right? Well, not quite. Although Yoichi Kotobe continued producing promotional art of Peach, inside the games themselves, it was a different story. 
In Mario 2 and 3, for instance, Peach still had that dark red hair from her original 8-bit sprite, and the hairstyle also bore little resemblance to the one Yoichi Kotobe gave her. You can see some attempts to include elements of the Kotobe design, like the pink colour of the dress and some earrings. But on the whole, these sprites don't look a whole lot like the design that Yoichi Kotobe created. Likely this was due to technical restrictions more than anything else. But finally, a few years later with the release of Super Mario World, Peach's in-game design got a big update. Finally, her blonde hair made it into the games, along with the distinctive hairstyle that Kotobe gave her. And while her earrings still aren't quite the right colour, most other details made it over, like that gem on the front of her dress. This is undoubtedly an adaptation of Yoichi Kotobe's redesigned Princess Peach. Then, in 1996 came one final huge change, 3D! For the first time, Peach was no longer a flat collection of pixels, but instead an object in 3D space. And the guy in charge of Mario 64's 3D models was Yoshiaki Koizumi. In fact, one of Koizumi's first tasks on Mario 64 was to design the 3D model for Mario, which is kind of a lot of responsibility. After all, players would be staring at this guy for the entire game. But after that, Koizumi later designed the first 3D model for Peach too, and he closely based this model on Yoichi Kotobe's design. Her blonde hair and distinctive hairstyle, the blue earrings, the gem on her chest, everything from Kotobe's design was brought over. And so, together with Leslie Swan's voiceover work, this is what players saw when they started a new game. Dear Mario, please come to the castle. I have baked a cake for you. Yours truly, Princess Toadstool. Peach. Of course, Peach's design has changed a little from that initial chunky looking 3D model, but only very slightly. Put the 3D model from 1996 next to a render from the last few years, and other than looking a little smoother, there aren't really any major changes. This is the Princess Peach that players know and love. A far cry from that initial beady-eyed sprite, or Shigeru Miyamoto's slightly goofy looking illustration. She's certainly come a long way in 35 years. Hey, thanks for watching to the end, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then you might enjoy my video about why Pikachu doesn't look like he used to, that's on screen if you're interested. And thank you again for watching, okay goodbye, bye! Thank you.